Reaper, also known as Gabriel Reyes, harks back to the very beginning of Overwatch, solidifying himself in the game and lore as an edgy, shotgun-wielding villain shrouded in shadow. Throughout the history of Overwatch, Reaper has been used in various compositions that complement the use of his short-range, high-output damage, which is a product of his signature double shotguns. Throughout the years, many minor changes have gone through that have adjusted Reaper slightly, with a few changing his playstyle entirely. Today, we're going to look into just how this character was changed, and if it was for the better or for the worse. This is the evolution of Reaper. During the early stages of Overwatch, while it was still under the name of Project Titan, an early form of Reaper appeared on concept art that depicted him as a playable class. Featuring in this concept were abilities Shadow Walk and Death Blossom with him being able to utilize weapons such as dual shotguns and magnum. Not too far off to where he ended up, his portrait is pretty much identical to the Reaper we have today. To start, he only existed as this concept art, and then the actual character of Reaper was expanded on, once Overwatch had entered development. While his abilities and values have been tweaked over the years, the core functionality of this character has pretty much stayed true to one vision, living in backlines and melting tanks. Reaper as a character has always been a close-range menace. With his Hellfire shotguns dealing up to 120 damage per shot, he can easily two-tap most of the cast in the game, and even melt the beefiest tanks in seconds if he sinks enough pellets into them. Being in the front line, however, makes him incredibly susceptible to burst damage and being stunned. So he has a Wraith form as a free bailout card, and it's also one of the greatest invulnerability tools in the game. Shadow Step, which we will get into more detail later, is his mobility, granting him a long cast time teleport to any location within his sight and range. His ultimate ability, Death Blossom, is probably his most defining feature, and seeing Reaper drop from above while spinning in circles has become a staple to the character. The beauty of Reaper comes in his simplicity, which he trades off as being easy to play, but incredibly difficult to use effectively if the enemy counters you properly. Where Reaper fails is mid to long range combat, being basically useless at these ranges. His only goal during poke battles is to find a way in or to punish the enemy diving tanks, which he excels at. His ultimate, while powerful if unexpected, can easily be stunned, blocked, or defense matrixed if the enemy team was prepared for it, like if one of them saw you shadow step behind them. Overall, close quarter combat is where Reaper wants to be, and where he finds most of his success while minimizing his weaknesses as much as he can. Throughout the years, his playstyle has changed in ways that affect how he interacts with enemies, and where he falls into the meta. Let's take a look at what has changed for Reaper over the years. Even in prototype test footage, we can see Reaper sporting the dual shotguns and a very early version of his ultimate ability, Death Blossom. Skipping forward to release, we get a better picture as to how Reaper actually was once players could play him. To begin, upon killing an enemy, Reaper used to drop soul orbs, which he could then pick up to gain hit points back. This worked pretty well, all things considered, especially since Reaper was already melee ranged, so he did not have to divert his course too much to pick them up. His wraith form during this time did not reload his clip and could not be cancelled. Once you pressed shift, you had to wait the entire duration and ideally utilize it to escape. His shadow step was also infamously clunky, having to stand still and become a sitting duck for its entire duration, as well as notifying the enemy team to your whereabouts due to the ridiculously loud voice line that played when you arrived at your destination. Death comes. An entire year after release, in May 2017, his wraith form was adjusted to entirely refill Reaper's ammo clip when wraith form was used, which allowed him to continue shooting upon exiting his invulnerable phase. But this was only the beginning of the tweaks that Blizzard had in store for Reaper. When June 2017 rolled around, Blizzard rethought his soul orb pickup mechanic, and added a new passive in its stead called the Reaping, which effectively gave him a form of lifesteal via his shotguns. Removing health orbs entirely from his kit, Reaper now gained 20% of all damage done to heroes directly to his health. This meant that over a sustained fight, Reaper could theoretically keep himself up if he just kept shooting the enemy. He no longer needed a kill to heal himself. Seven days later, Blizzard pushed out another balance patch that reduced the sound effect and voiceover distance of Shadow Step by 50%, from what seemed like a map-wide look at me to a still loud but less noticeable voice line, especially during a hectic teamfight. In April of next year, 2018, they added the reload mechanic to his ultimate as well, which no longer left him stranded without ammo after dropping onto the enemy team. Along with this, his wraith form was a lot faster, going up to 50% from 25. 
Also to the Wraith form, they added a crucial cancel mechanic, which allowed Reaper to stop his Wraith form early. This allowed his usual escape card to be utilized in other ways, like phasing through a flashbang or as a quicker reload. All of this lent itself to an even more aggressive playstyle, allowing an unchecked Reaper to become a true flanking threat. Come November of 2018, Blizzard yet again wanted to make changes to Reaper, but this time directly affecting his values, which proved to be utterly game-changing for the character. To begin, his Hellfire shotguns were adjusted to reduce spread randomization by 50%, which would make his shotguns a lot more accurate. Secondly, Blizzard began something that they would surely come to regret. To start, it was just a measly 10% upgrade to his lifesteal, which brought it up to 30% from 20% of damage dealt. No big deal, right? It wasn't. Until in January of next year, where Blizzard increased his lifesteal to 50% from 30. This would prove to be disastrous in-game, as Reaper became an unstoppable killing machine that could outheal any damage being done to him. If Roadhog hooked a Reaper, it was the Roadhog that died. This was, of course, intentional by Blizzard, as this was when GOATS was running rampant on the game. Alongside a giant armor damage reduction nerf, this patch was clearly meant to throw the meta into shambles. But all it ended up doing was making playing tanks miserable. Luckily, this mayhem only lasted about two months. As in March, they lowered his lifesteal 10% down to 40% of damage dealt, which while still a fair bit, it was a lot more manageable than him healing half of all damage he output, which was actually a lot. As Overwatch modernized a lot more, the clunkiness of Reaper became apparent, as players became better at the game and came to appreciate the snappy feeling of mobility that Doomfist and Genji offered, with their low downtime and lack of being stuck in an animation. This finally led to Blizzard adjusting the long overdue Shadow Step ability in April of 2019. Finally, Reaper can now be airborne while casting it, removing the need to be standing completely still to choose a location to teleport to. Along with this, they halved the vulnerable stage in which Reaper is exiting the Shadow Step animation to half a second, down from one whole second. Some other quality of life changes were made, such as allowing the teleporting Reaper to displace railings and any other breakable objects that would have previously blocked his destination. Then Reaper sat pretty much untouched until January of 2020, in which they took his lifesteal back down to 30%, which was its second value after initially adding the passive. Then, in February of 2021, a whole entire year after the last change, his Hellfire shotguns got a damage smoothing pass, which reduced his spread but reduced his damage per projectile, from 7 to 5.5 damage per pellet. This change allowed him to be more of a threat at a greater distance, instead of having to barrel stuff to deal any meaningful damage. This was later revised on, putting the damage per pellet to 6, up from 5.5 but not quite 7 where it used to be. Finally, in June 2021, Reaper got his latest balance patch as of this video. His lifesteal amount was yet again adjusted, raising it to 35% up from 30. This is classic textbook Blizzard balance practice, first overbuffing something, then nerfing it, only then to slowly crawl towards a middle ground that seems to work. So when was Reaper actually played? Well, you may remember that Ana's nano boost used to give an incredible speed boost, and paired with a powerful yet slow moving ult, things can get deadly very quickly. This is exactly what happened back in Season 2 of Overwatch in 2016. Nobody knows exactly who discovered it, but it turns out that nanoing and ulting Reaper was pretty much a guaranteed team kill, since his speed and ridiculous damage output couldn't be countered by anything, especially if you had a Zarya bubble to work with. The composition was a terrifying one, Reinhardt and Zarya for tanks, Reaper and Mei as DPS, and Ana and Lucio as supports. Reinhardt and Zarya were born for the frontline and enabling their DPS, whilst a hero like Lucio can speed boost the Reaper, to become even faster than the nano boost speed increase alone. Coined by the Overwatch player Surefour, the name of the composition was the Beyblade meta, which was named after the spinning Beyblade toys from the 1990s. Just like the toys you would have in Arena, have your enemy, and you would let it rip. Beyblade, let it rip! Electronic launch is top and base speed, and each old separately batteries got included assembly required. Later on in the season, as an answer to the oppressive Reaper on wheels, people began to run the Pharah Mercy combo, replacing Mei and Lucio. Since they were able to apply pressure and secure picks while staying a very safe distance from the Beyblade Reaper and Mei's Blizzard. In patch 1.5.0.2a, released to live clients on November 15th, 2016, Ano's nano boost speed multiplier was removed from the ultimate, which weakened the Beyblade combo, since you had a lot more time to react accordingly, and even had a chance to maybe stun the Reaper out of his ultimate. Nonetheless, this meta remains nostalgic to those who played during it, as a good memory or bad. It reminds of a simpler Overwatch, and the terror that Reaper's ult used to instill. After then, Reaper wasn't played extensively for a while, being pushed out of the meta due to Dive taking the spotlight. 
then followed immediately by Double Sniper and ultimately Goats, which sent Overwatch into a wasteland until Blizzard finally implemented Rolllock into the game, forcing team compositions to follow the 2-2-2 rule. When Sigma was released during Roll Q beta, it threw Overwatch into Double Shield, which meant Orisa and Sigma played all the time. DPS-wise, the damage dealers that were thwarted less by shields began to come forward, whilst snipers disappeared. Doomfist was played too, as his entire kit was effective through shields, and Reaper also resurfaced, since he already plays at melee range so barriers aren't a big deal to him, since he can just walk through them and wraith out once things get a little hairy. From the very beginning, Reaper was an all-or-nothing burst damage dealer who threatened utter death every time you see him near you. Being slippery with his wraith form is a key element to the elusiveness of a proficient Reaper, and knowing when and how to use it is what makes a Reaper an absolute nuisance. Whether it be repositioning behind the enemy team to set up for a surprise death blossom, or speed boosting in alongside your tanks while holding down left click. Reaper at his core is a fun character. His simplicity makes him very easy to pick up and understand, but the nuances in his playstyle and ebb and flow of his damage dealing and self-sustain is what makes him so unique among the rest of the Overwatch cast. And that's all we have for this episode of Meta Archives. What do you think of Reaper in his current state? Do you think Reaper needs any further changes? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason B, Brendan, QB, Foxy, Mauve, Pachanas, Pin, Sierra, Shampoo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, Marco, and Flight for being Diamond supporters. We appreciate all the support. If you want to talk to us, check out our Discord. If you want to support our channel and get info on unreleased videos, check out our Patreon. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.